Good morning, everybody. Uh, good afternoon, wherever you are. I'm in London, so it's good morning for me. Um, and um, I wanted to share with you the nine secrets to become a female leader in tech. Um, and um, I just want to start with a little story. Uh, back in May 2009, when I uh, I was I just landed in London at Gatwick Airport with uh, myself and my then boyfriend, now husband. And uh, I was a 23-year-old, uh, freshly arrived from Italy, where we used to live, and moving to London, very excited to start our, start our career in, um, you know, having a very successful career. We were very ambitious and super excited to start. Um, and that's when I got my first, well, my first job as a marketing specialist, working for a software uh, company in London. And that's when I had my first experience of working for a very uh, male-dominated um, industry, male-dominated environment where there was there was only there were only a few women working uh, in that company, and especially in leadership position, there were almost no women. So, um, and then fast forward a few years, I worked for. Um, half a dozen technology companies and some private companies, some public companies, some large companies like Facebook, um, PagerDuty, Pivotal, and some smaller companies. And um, uh, the vast majority of my experience was that I was experienced being uh, the only woman, uh, especially in leadership. So uh, having worked for 10 plus years in technology, um, I've decided to build my own company called Inspired Human, and I now help technology companies bring more diversity and inclusion in the workplace to help them perform better and better attract and retain talents and uh, keep talents engaged. Um, so why it matters to have female leaders in tech? Well, outside of my personal story, um, if you just look at the news and the media, there, there are lots of cases of um, sexual harassment. So there's, there was this article on Fast Company about 60% of women in Silicon Valley being sexually harassed, or um, at Uber, mass firings at Uber, sexual harassment. So, and then the, you know, research after research show that um, tech is still a hostile environment if you're not a straight white man. So it's not just my personal experience; it's also the media, but also research after research and study after study show that. The more diverse teams are, the more uh, the better they are at problem solving. The better they are at creative um, innovation, and the better uh, diverse teams are at impacting financial results and positive financial results. So that's why it's important to have female uh, leaders in tech. Now, before I start, just a show of hands. Although I can't see you right now, but um, who has um, had a mentor in their career, and who has had an ally helping them? I certainly had, and I remember back when I started um, 10 years ago, I certainly didn't have a mentor, I certainly didn't have a sponsor, and um, it took me a few years to really find someone who was really a mentor. So here's a picture of me and one of my strongest mentors, mentor, someone who really opened career doors for me and opened career opportunities. And um, actually, I found one of my first mentor and ally um, a couple of years after I started working in tech. It's someone who hired me, even though I was pregnant. So imagine someone who took a risk uh, on hiring me, hiring a pregnant woman who was about to give birth, and but because he believed in me, and we had a genuine, um, authentic um, relationship, work with where he was genuinely in, interested in my career growth and development. It was very genuine, so that was very helpful. Now another thing is, um, I, um, it's I, I started uh, early in my career. I didn't really have, um, we didn't really implement systemic changes. What I mean by that is. For example, um, as a marketing uh, manager, I was always trying to have female speakers speaking at my events, but I really struggled. So it was me manually asking for more female speakers, etc. And I decided to make it more a systemic approach. So we decided, I decided to write a code of conduct for events that was asking to have 50% female speakers. So really, that's an example of how you can create a systemic change. That's going to help position you as an advocate for diversity and really help your career growth. Um, also, um, how, who, which one of you have has ever shared their career goals with their with their manager uh, when they started? Because when I started in two thousand nine, I was a marketing specialist. I didn't really share my career goals. You know, I thought I, I could come across as too aggressive or too ambitious. But I quickly realized when I started having mentors that they encouraged me to share my goals and really sharing my long term career goals really helped me get more um, opportunities in my career. Now, which one of you knows what glamour work means? 
I'm raising my hand because uh, I've researched that. But basically, glamour work is anything that's high profile. When you're giving a keynote, speaking on stage, or working with a senior executive, joining a task force at your company, because these glamour works are really going to help you position you as as a as an expert and really give you uh, more um, connections with. Uh, senior executives in your company and that's going to help you open doors so really uh, I'd encourage you to ask for glamour work uh, at your company now um, which one of you has ever asked one of your their previous managers to get a recommendations for for a new job I did and I think it's the case for most of us and I remember once I received a recommendation for a new job that was uh, had a lot of doubts phrases in it so for example um, they said, yes, um, she, she's good, it, but she might require some pushing sometimes. And that really was counterproductive. So I really pushed back and I asked for a wholehearted recommendation, a, a recommendation that was uh, focusing on the positive outcomes on the business and that was really wholehearted and that really made a difference. So that's something I would encourage you to do as well. Now, which one of you here thinks they have a truly inclusive network? And by that, I mean, which one of you thinks that their uh, friends and colleagues and co-workers are, come from all sorts of life, all genders, all races, all ethnicities and religion? I'm not raising my hand because I think I still need to work on that. But my point here is when I started in 2009, I was 23 years old as a marketing specialist for a vendor, software vendor. My network was very much uh, homogeneous. They were all like me, you know, women, young women. Um, it was not very diverse. And I quickly realized after a few years that uh, when I made an intentional, um, conscious effort reaching out to people who were, you know, different gender, you know, men and different ages, maybe older and different um, races, different uh, religious uh, backgrounds, different ethnicities. That really gave me new perspectives and new connections, and that really opened career doors for me. So, just to share an example, I now have a, my next door neighbor. She's a young woman of color, a young black woman, and um, we now have a monthly uh, social distancing walk outside of our house because we want to uh, build uh, relationships and connection um, and, and I make that effort, that intentional effort to build a more diverse network, people who are not just like me because I know that it's good, it's healthy to have different perspectives and, and I want to learn from different people and that also helps me open career doors. Now, women in tech, um, so most of you m must be women in tech, how many of you have ever been the one scheduling the next meeting after a meeting? I have. But how many of you have ever collected money for uh, a colleague's new baby and, and bought the gift for the colleague's new baby? I know I have multiple times. And how many of you have ever made a restaurant reservation for a team building activity at work? I have. And so all these things are things I used to do a lot when I started my career, when I was a junior marketing um, exec. And I quickly realized I was counterproductive because not only it was taking time away from my day job, but also it was positioning me as lower value. So I'm not saying those are bad things, but I'm saying make sure you share the load with your male workers. Um, and equally, if you're in a meeting where uh, people direct questions to the man because they think the man has more uh, expertise, but you are the expert, uh, push back and say that you're the expert. Or if someone uh, takes credit for your ID, push back and say it was your ID. Um, or if someone asks off question, off topic questions just to test you and challenge you, push back. So just very, be very bold and, and push back because that's going to help you open doors for your career. And um, how many of you have heard the phrase when you were in a meeting and there were men and women and you've heard, hey guys, we're running late or hey guys, we've only got 20 minutes left when there was actually a group of women and men in the meeting? I know I have. And at the beginning of my career, um, when I was a younger marketing exec, I, I didn't push back on these um, kind of non-inclusive words. But now I've started doing that and I've noticed a real difference, a shift. Um, my colleagues are more uh, conscious of that and by using a more inclusive language that they are more conscious of, of, of female in the workplace. And my last tip is how many of you have been labeled as aggressive in a performance review? I know I have. Um, or I was told to work on my personality or my emotions and my tone when actually um, I should have received feedback, actionable feedback on the business outcome. So one, uh, one big learning for me was to demand effective feedback and feedback that was focused on the business outcome, not on emotions and subjective. 
Um, and I would love to continue the conversation. So um, I'd love if you could, you know, follow me on LinkedIn. It's Inspired Hyphen Human, or on Twitter, it's I'm Inspired Human, or on Facebook, it's Inspired Human Consulting. Or drop me an email just to continue the conversation. I'd love to hear your your stories as well.